Today we're going to find out the relationship between airflow and horsepower. More importantly, we're going to find out how much power you can make with stock cylinder heads. In this video, we try to find out how much power we can make with stock cylinder heads, both on a 5 liter Ford and a 5.7 liter LS1. Now we ran the E7TE Ford heads and the 241 LS1 heads on three different combinations, stock, mildly modified and wildly modified. So the question is, the airflow stayed the same, but the power output increased. How much power can we make with these stock heads? Whenever I run cylinder head testing, I get a very common question. Hey Richard, is there a way to determine the power potential of a set of cylinder heads based on the airflow? And the answer is yes. Use this simple formula. Take the peak airflow offered by that cylinder head, multiply it by two, on a typical V8, that will give you a pretty good idea what the horsepower potential is of that cylinder head based on the airflow. Unfortunately, like everything, there are variables associated with that power number. And the problem is the power output offered by a set of cylinder heads really has less to do with the peak flow than it does to do with the average flow. You see, if you have two sets of heads, one of them has really good flow at 200, 300, and 400 valve lift, even if it doesn't have enough as much peak flow as another set of heads that has a good peak flow number at 700 lift, the one with the good average flow number is gonna make more power. And there are a lot of other things, valve size, port size, even chamber design and shape. They all play a part in the eventual power production of that cylinder head. And unfortunately, I can't cover all of that in one video, so we're gonna take a look at one thing, and that's the relationship between the airflow of the cylinder head and the potential power output. It's easy math, so let's get going. To get things started, we'll take a look at first at the 5 liter Ford using the stock E7TE iron head, that stock head on a you know factory fuel Mustang. Well, it's about 158 CFM on the ones that I've airflow tested, and that's been a lot of them. And if we take a look here, this is basically a stock 5 liter Ford, stock HO manifold, throttle body, all that stuff, stock cam, run with long tube headers and stuff the way that we run it on the engine dyno. Pretty typical, and that makes 250, you know, 259 horsepower, so 260 horsepower, and 320 or so foot pounds of torque. Now, if we, what we do is we use our formula to compare and see how much power we're making per CFM, basically how well we're using that cylinder head. So, if we uh, divide 259 by 158 CFM, we get 1.63 horsepower per CFM. That's pretty good. That's a stock motor. You know, that's not a bad number. But now let's take a look and see what happens when we apply this to a couple of modified motors. And unfortunately, I can't keep this stock uh, combination up here because some of them are old, some of them are new, and they just don't cooperate. So I'll skip over to the other two. We'll take a look at those. Test motor number two was a modified 302, and it was actually a 306-inch motor. It had a mild comp cam in it, and it was also carbureted. It had a, a dual-plane intake, a 650 Holley on it. So it was a modified version, still the same head. As a matter of fact, it was exactly the same head as we ran on that stock version. And equipped with the cam and intake manifold, long tube headers, that combina this combination made 306 horsepower using the same head and 342 foot-pounds of torque. But if we use the calculation, 306 horsepower divided by 158 CFM, we get a pretty good number. We start, we're starting to get up there. We get 1.936 horsepower per CFM. So we're starting to use the cylinder head more, and as we'll see, we're starting to get a little bit more restrictive. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we ran our final combination, and that was actually a 392-inch stroker Ford, a Windsor-based, 351 Windsor-based stroker, but still this same head. It had a healthy camshaft, and it was a combination that we used for a cylinder head test that I did for Muscle Mustangs. So on the 392-inch motor, we made 387 horsepower and over 450 foot-pounds of torque, 456 foot-pounds. But if we do our calculation, 387 horsepower divided by 158 CFM, we're making 2.449 horsepower per CFM. 
Now that's a pretty big number and the reason that we're doing that is because that 392 inch or 393 inch motor is really drawing on that cylinder head. Um, it's basically sucking it for all it's worth. So it's working well given that cylinder head, but actually what this combination needs is a cylinder head upgrade. And that number being above two tells us that. We'll check that out when we get to our conclusion. Let's take a look at what happened when we ran the LS head. To continue to illustrate the relationship between airflow and horsepower, we ran the same test on a 5.7 liter LS1 with the factory 241 head. And that factory 241 head flows 238 CFM, and on our basically stock with long tube header LS1, it produced 414 horsepower and 418 foot pounds of torque. And you guys might be wondering how does a stock 345 horsepower 5.7 liter make? over 400 horsepower, it's basically the way that we test it. No accessories, you know, it has an optimized tune, long tube headers, no air intake, you know, all of that stuff. That's that's basically the difference. But if we take a look at our comparison of airflow versus power and divide 414 by 238, we see that for every CFM, we are making 1.739 horsepower, which is a pretty good number. So obviously even the factory is doing well. But let's take a look and see what happened when we started modifying this combination. And unfortunately, just like the 5 liter Ford, this test was run long ago, and I can't compare these directly. So we'll go to our modified stuff and take a look at those. Since the LS1 heads flow 238 CFM, obviously there was a lot of power, a lot of power potential left in those. So what we did was we put together a modified LS1, basically a cam deal. And this one also had an LS6 intake. That thing produced 477 horsepower. and 451 foot-pounds of torque. And if we divide 477 by our 238 CFM, we see that for every CFM, we're making a little over two horsepower. So we're starting to get up into a good range. We're starting to really utilize that cylinder head. But let's take a look at an even wilder modification here. This was actually on a 408 stroker. This one was the one that I used for the big LS1 cylinder head test, and I'll be bringing that video to you guys too fairly soon. On this combination, we made 550 horsepower using the stock LS1 head and 517 foot-pounds of torque. If we divide 550 by 238, we get 2.31 horsepower per CFM. Again, like that 5 liter Ford, that number's really getting up there, and we're really utilizing basically every last CFM that that head has to offer. But it's also telling us, hey, guess what? It's time to upgrade the cylinder head. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what's the takeaway from this video? Well, here's the information I'd like you to learn and apply for other cylinder heads. Let's take a look at our five liter Ford heads, 158 CFM. Now on our 393 stroker, we were able to make more than two horsepower per CFM. What that means is we're really maximizing the power potential of those cylinder heads. If we get over two, we're doing pretty good. But it also tells us something else. If we're making over two horsepower per CFM, it also tells us it's time to upgrade the cylinder heads. That's right, on this particular 393, when we upgraded the heads from those factory heads, we made way over 500 horsepower. I mean, we picked up 150 horsepower from a head swap. Not because the heads that we used were so great. As a matter of fact, I installed a ton of different cylinder heads on that combination for a test I did for muscle Mustangs and fast forwards. But the reality is if we use that number and it's above 2.0 horsepower per CFM, it means we need more cylinder head. That combination needed more cylinder head. When we installed more cylinder head, we look like a hero. So use that number to gauge how well you're doing but how well you could be doing with a better cylinder head. Now we saw the same thing on the LS1. We were able to make more power with the LS1 than we were with that five liter Ford head because it flows more. As a matter of fact, we made 550 horsepower, which also put us over the two horsepower per CFM. We know we were doing well, but what else do we know? We also know that if we installed a better set of cylinder heads, we'd make more power. 
And I'm gonna bring that video to you coming up because I ran that motor with a ton of different LS1 heads, aftermarket, ported, you name it, they all picked up power. As a matter of fact, we made way over 600 horsepower with a lot of the ported heads. So again, that number, if it's above 2.0 horsepower per CFM, it's time to upgrade the heads. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. More videos coming up.